Now the best way to understand the metaverse is to experience it yourself. Experience it yourself. Experience it yourself. Yeah, I definitely don't feel very well right now. By now, I'm sure you've heard of Facebook's grand plan for the metaverse. Zuckerberg believes that the metaverse is the future of virtual school, work, communication, gaming, social media, and basically anything else you can think of. And he's so confident in this vision that he went as far as changing the entire company's name from Facebook to Meta. I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. Some think that Zuckerberg has lost his mind for pursuing this dead end so viciously, while others feel that Zuckerberg is leading forward the VR revolution. Regardless of which side you stand on, one thing that we can all agree on is that the metaverse has thus far been extraordinarily expensive. Over the last few years, Meta has invested over $10 billion into the metaverse every single year. And this trend is expected to carry on for several years with a total budget of $100 billion. But despite Zuckerberg's willingness to go all in and bet big, it doesn't seem like Meta has been able to produce any real results. I mean, this right here is the end result of spending tens of billions on R&D. As many have pointed out, it doesn't look all that much better than Mii's from 2006 or even Minecraft. And those games aren't even trying to be realistic, while Meta is literally trying to create a virtual reality. Now, you might be thinking that the ludicrous cost can be explained by the fact that Meta is having to develop a bunch of new technology. But here's the thing, GTA 5, which looks like this, only cost $265 million to make, and this game is now nearly 10 years old. Meanwhile, Apple's entire R&D cost between 2002 and 2007 was only $3.4 billion. Heck, even the self-driving industry as a whole is only estimated to have invested $100 billion since 2010. In other words, the metaverse is expected to cost 33 times the cost of the original iPhone and the entirety of the self-driving investment thus far. To make things worse, it doesn't seem like anyone even wants to use the deck of billion dollar products coming out of Meta. This one Metaverse feature, which cost 1.2 billion for example, has a mere 38 active users. So here's the baffling economics of the Metaverse. One of the main reasons that the economics of the metaverse has become so bloated is because Meta itself has become a bloated company. Since 2018 alone, Meta has grown their employee count from 35,000 to 72,000, and much of this hiring has to do with metaverse development. Not only did Meta hire tens of thousands of people over the past few years, but they hired them at the absolute highest costs. They were offering principal software engineers $1.82 million, senior directors $3.14 million, and even recruiters up to $270,000. Theoretically, this was supposed to help them hire the best talent, but there's one fundamental flaw with this approach. Just because you pay the highest salaries does not mean that you'll actually attract the best talent. While the best talent does indeed want to be paid well, they care much more about the work that they're doing and trying to create real-world impact and to put it bluntly, the top talent simply does not give a crap about Meta or the Metaverse. And this isn't speculation, it's actually a verifiable trend. You see, before Meta stock got destroyed and they had to do hiring freezes and layoffs, they were aggressively recruiting, but with little success. Despite literally offering 100th percentile salaries, Meta was struggling to get even 50% of engineers to accept their job offers. That itself is a pretty shocking fact, but I'd argue that this is even worse than it appears on the surface. It's more than likely that the 50% who did accept the job offers were swayed by the money or prestige as opposed to the job itself. Now, there's nothing wrong with this as these guys were just looking out for themselves, but it does leave Meta with quite a conundrum. It's a simple fact that people who do a job for money are less productive than those who do it with a passion. The reason Meta offered so much was to ideally attract the latter. But it looks like they ended up paying top of the market salaries and attracting the former anyway. And this brings us to the much larger problem within Meta as a whole. 
It seems that Zuckerberg has this mindset that money and brute force can solve any issue, but he's finding out the hard way that that's not true. Just because you spend 500 million on a project that should only cost 300 million does not mean that the project will be completed faster, better, or with greater appeal. In fact, it's likely to create even more inefficiencies as employees won't have to be on their A-game to finish the project. This is one of the main reasons that we saw so many day-in-the-life TikToks about Facebook employees doing absolute jack. Normal companies would just go ahead and fire these individuals, but given that Facebook was already struggling to meet their hiring goals, the last thing they wanted to do was let go of their existing staff, until recent times of course. Given the recession, Meta has shifted most of their focus to running a tighter ship than trying to get more people on board. But this is nonetheless one of the main reasons that Metaverse projects are coming out with ridiculous price tags. Aside from being bloated, another massive hurdle that Meta has been tackling with is technological shortcomings, or more accurately, self-imposed shortcomings. If you're familiar with traditional VR offerings, you know that the VR headset is usually just a display and input device. It's not a rendering device. The rendering and the graphical work is usually offloaded to a powerful gaming PC. So if you wanted to game in VR, you not only needed an expensive headset, but an even more expensive gaming PC. This of course made the technology virtually inaccessible to the general public, but this was simply the reality of translating AAA games to VR, at least somewhat respectably. Meta, however, decided to completely throw this out the window and try to render everything on board the headset itself. I mean, they did have good intentions, as this was supposed to make VR more affordable and accessible, given that you only needed the headset. But this also drove Meta's focus in the wrong direction. Instead of spending their tens of billions on game development, software, animations, and the UI, they spent much of it on optimizing and shrinking down hardware. And even then, they had to make major sacrifices when it comes to computational power, which is not that surprising. There's a reason that gaming PCs are so big. It's not just to make them look cool with RGB and liquid cooling loops. It's because you need that much space to optimally fit and sufficiently cool advanced tech. We should also note that the most powerful chips don't get their power from being more efficient than smaller chips. They often get their power from simply being bigger. So Meta was actively trying to work against all of this. They were trying to get the headset and controllers to keep track of 10 cameras, do optical recognition on these cameras, keep track of physical body movement, account for inputs from the controllers, render appropriate game content, and display 1920 by 1800 resolution content for each eye at 90 hertz, all while trying to maintain respectable battery life and not overheat. With so many technological challenges, I don't think that you'd be surprised to hear that the vast majority of Meta's investment has gone toward simply making the technology functional, as opposed to making the software and the graphics good. Many would argue that this is the completely wrong approach, and I'd have to agree. Instead of targeting the existing VR market by creating unreal graphics and experiences that would blow people's minds, they decided to spend all their effort trying to port a high-end gaming PC into a headset. And while I'm sure that was extremely challenging to do, it didn't really help the metaverse live up to the hype of its massive price tags. Speaking of price tags, Meta was also attempting to offer all of this for $1,500, which, while expensive, is nowhere near enough to make up for their development and production expenses. For perspective, you know all those fancy games that people compare to the metaverse? Well, all those games are run on the most advanced consumer GPUs like the 4080, which cost $1,200 by itself. So Meta is losing money on both ends when it comes to the Metaverse. While all of Meta's moves may be confusing from a consumer standpoint, it makes a lot more sense from an enterprise perspective. The reason that they want the headsets to be independent is so that they can tell it to companies as an alternative video conferencing solution. This way, companies will only have to buy the headset, not the headset and a computer. This is also the reason that Meta is spending so much money on trying to perfect facial expression recognition. It's supposed to help with video conferencing, but there's one fatal flaw with this entire pitch. Who's to say that companies are even interested in purchasing this technology? Companies purchase things for their employees for one reason and one reason only, to improve productivity. 
The main things that companies purchase for employees are computers and cell phones, and these make employees immeasurably more productive. But the value of this over Zoom or Teams is questionable to say the least, not to mention the massive difference in price. Long term, their pitch would probably be that companies can avoid flying directors and executives around the world by leveraging the metaverse. But here's the thing, companies don't send executives around the world because virtual meetings aren't advanced enough. They send them around the world to make impressions, close deals, and make clients feel valued. For example, let's say you're Oracle and that you have an upcoming meeting with Google. One of your VPs can meet with Google over Zoom just fine. But it makes a way stronger impression if you send a VP to meet with the Shanghai Google office in person. And when we're talking about multi-billion dollar deals, it's more than worth it for Oracle to fly the VP to Shanghai. A metaverse meeting would simply not be a good substitute regardless of how good it gets. So as much as Zuckerberg wants the metaverse to be a replacement for in-person meetings, it's more than likely just going to be a replacement for Zoom meetings which isn't necessarily a bad thing. There could be value there for many companies, but given the slow pace of corporate adoption and the state of the metaverse today, that's likely several years in the future, if not decades. In fact, Meta themselves are struggling to get their own internal employees to use the technology, and they basically have unlimited free access to it. So it seems like the metaverse is yet to even be a good option for Meta themselves. In the meantime, while the facial expression technology may be a cool feature for gamers, it's by no means a selling feature or something that people would truly appreciate. That would be like buying an iPhone just for its emoji capabilities. So this is simply yet another example of Meta chasing after a currently non-existent market instead of giving the existing VR market what they want. In the end, the overarching question surrounding the metaverse is quite simple. Why does it suck so much despite Meta pouring tens of billions into it? Well, it really just boils down to two things. Meta has an extremely bloated workforce that was highly inflating development costs, and Meta has no understanding of the current VR market. Instead of tending to the enthusiast market by creating something truly phenomenal that everyone can appreciate, Meta decided to spend all of their resources chasing after the general public and enterprises. The result is an underwhelming product that serves no one and is the laughing stock of the internet with a customer acquisition cost of $31.6 million. And if Meta doesn't change their focus to address the current VR market, the economics of the metaverse will remain baffling for years to come. Do you think that the metaverse will ever succeed? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you wish that Meta would spend some of that money on collecting less data instead of burning it on the metaverse. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest for video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.